right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something that is kind of book related, but like isn't, but is. So a couple of you guys have asked that I show you guys my book journal because I have shown me doing spreads for it in like vlogs and stuff. And I thought that sounded like a really fun idea. I also wanted to do like how to start one, like the supplies I use, like small segment kind of deal. So that'll be in here as well. If you're not interested in that though, I will put timestamps so you can just like flip to the flip through. So yeah, I'm very excited about this. I started this journal specifically in January of 2021, but I do have a bullet journal for 2020, which maybe I'll do a flip through at some point. I'm not sure. It's kind of rudimentary. This is my favorite one. So obviously I'm gonna start with this one and it's not completely full. I think I have like, I don't know, 10 spreads left in this and you're probably wondering like why I didn't wait until I was completely finished with this one and to answer that question um I don't know <laughs> I just wanted to film this video now so yes we're just gonna get into it I hope you guys are interested in this concept and like the video so let's go okay so obviously the first thing you may want to think about is what kind of journal you want to use so I started out with a relatively cheap journal but then after I filled that one up and decided that I really enjoyed the process of book journaling, I decided to buy a little bit more of an expensive one. This one was around $30 from Notebook Therapy. It's the Suki Moonflower journal and I love it so much. There are a couple of things you're going to want to keep in mind when looking for a journal. You definitely want one that lays like completely flat on the table. It's just so much easier and you will get irritated if it does not lay completely flat. Like, trust me, it doesn't really matter. I do have a couple of other options that you might want to look into. A lot of people use the Midori MD notebook, which I use for like normal bullet journaling, like scheduling, planning and whatnot for a while. I don't do that anymore just because I grew tired of doing it, like normal bullet journaling, but it was really good for its original purpose and I like it. It's very minimalist. It's aesthetically pleasing. You can also just use like a random notebook. This one I use as like a daily journal kind of thing, but I think it could definitely work for bullet journal. Like you can make anything work. It's just really a personal preference kind of thing. So just keep that in mind when looking for a journal. Okay, let's talk supplies. Now I know there's like a million different pens and markers and highlighters and whatnot that you can use, but these are the ones that I have found work best for me. So as far as like markers go, I use these Crayola Super Tips. I got a package of them in high school and I've definitely lost like half the package, but the ones that I still have are going strong and I really like them. For the highlighters, very basic option here. They're the Zebra Mild Liners. I'm sure you all know about them. I love the colors because they're very like pastel they have a lot of different options and I kind of use these in the same way that I use like the super tips just for like coloring things and titles and whatnot and they're really good for it for writing utensils I have like a pilot g2 gel pen the original the best you know her you love her I also have like a random muji pen that I like it's just another good like gel pen these are the are they Pigma Microns, maybe? Oh, they're the Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners. You can definitely find like cheaper fine liners, but these are just the ones I have. And then finally for writing on black paper, I have this just jelly roll white pen. I've tried a couple of different white pens and I've just found that this one works best. Another essential is just like random bits of paper. I don't know where I would be with my journaling if I did not have random bits of paper just laying around. I have like a pack of craft paper that I bought so long ago that is still going strong. I have a bunch of random strips of paper from other spreads that I've done. I have this strawberry paper, which is really cute and I want to try and use at some point. I have a couple of art prints that I do plan to like maybe use in a spread at some point. I also have these like antique looking envelopes, which I also love putting in my spread so I can like write things down, put them in the envelope, it's cute. It's a nice just added like element of texture to the page and it's nice. Another bit of paper that you can incorporate in a book journal is book pages. Obviously, I would like to publicly apologize to Edith Hamilton for defacing this book, but it has gorgeous illustrations of like Greek myth things in it and I love them. Also, this book is really beat up and it was beat up when I bought it, so please don't yell at me. Another thing that I love is this paper slicer. This used to be my mom's and she thankfully gave it to me. I love it. It's so good for cutting straight lines. Obviously, 
you can use scissors, but this is just so much easier. As far as adhesive goes, there's a couple of options. That's upside down, but that's fine. There's like a Xyron machine. It's good for small bits of paper and it puts the sticky adhesive everywhere on the piece and it's so good. Again, this was my mom's and she gave it to me. I don't necessarily know if I'd recommend you go out and buy one, but it is rather helpful. This is a roll of double-sided tape which is unbelievably inconvenient, but there is a lot of it on the roll, so I would like to use it up. And then I have a tiny tape roller, which is my preferred method of using adhesive, but this is out of adhesive and it's been out of adhesive for like four months. So I just need to go buy some more, but I don't want to because it's expensive. <laughs> Another essential in bullet journaling is stickers. This is my envelope of stickers and it literally busted the envelope, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Oh my god, I'm so excited to talk about this. I found this at the thrift store and it is a little sticker book of fairy stickers. I can't get over it. I found this earlier today. I'm obsessed, but that's not the point. You can literally get stickers anywhere. I think those leaf stickers are from Walmart. The Pluto sticker, I think I bought off of eBay. A lot of these are from like Hobby Lobby or Joann's. This pack of flower stickers, I think I bought on... Mm, was it Etsy? I don't know. I have a lot of Christmas stickers also. Okay, that's it for like general supplies that I like to use. Now let's get into a little flip through of what I currently have done of my 2021 and 2022 book journal. The first page, I love this page so much. I love the colors. It's so fun and it is my favorite page in this bullet journal. I did another one for 2022, which I'll show you later, but... I love this one a lot and then I also definitely got this idea from Books with Chloe. She prints out like pictures of the books that she reads and I also started outlining them like my favorite books and it's just so fun a very visual way to see all the books that I've read in a year. This is my first like January 2021 spread. I tried to track the number of pages I read per day and that was a terrible idea. I got to like the 11th and then the semester started and it was over at that point so I literally just stopped. I literally wrote like on reflection this flopped <laughs> because it did here's my 2021 tbr on reflection i did a pretty good job on my 2021 tbr because there's only two books that i didn't get to go me this is just some recent fantasy reads for the time it's fun i used this art that i got from one of the books i read i think this was my 2021 february tbr i honestly hate this page and i don't want to look at it anymore here's just a little january wrap up something casual i did not feel like printing out all of the book covers so i just wrote a list of them this is again not book related but it is something to keep in mind and a, like a fun element to add I, you can look up a youtube video on how to do this like little pull out flippy thing i'll try and link one but it's so cool and I want to try and do another one because I love it so much. Here's just another spread of more books that I read in 2021. Um, here's my February wrap up from last year. I like to keep it nice and simple. Low commitment. Here's a March wrap up, days read kind of thing. All encompassing. I really like this spread just because of how simple it is. And here are my 2021 releases. I did another one of these for 2022 but I just wanted to track things that were coming out in like paperback and just things that were being published in general and it's really easy to just have it written down. I like that spread a lot. Here's my fantasy TBR. I've actually done a pretty good job. I think I've read like four out of these so far. Only five to go and I do plan to read Strange the Dreamer soon. So here's my March wrap up. Very similar to my February wrap up. Yeah and I also started doing some stats which is fun. I write just like Books read, pages read, fave book, and least favorite book. Did the same thing for April for my days read. Did a pretty good job in April as well, and I love the color scheme of this. Here are more books that I read in 2021. I'm getting very excited because it's when I started reading the Shadowhunters series. Such a good time. Also, just like a random April overview spread. Those are here every now and then. I also really love my April wrap-up spread. I love the little moon sticky notes. It's just so cute. Moving on to like a proper, you know, reading journal setup for May. I did Aristocats themed because I love the Aristocats. I used the little Aristocats font and some Aristocats stamps that I had. I do love this theme a lot. I just think it's so fun and... It was very easy, which I appreciated. Then for my summer TBR, which kind of flopped, 
It was so bad. I only read four of them. I think I've read six of these now, but like only four of them were read in the summer. So yikes. What can you do? This spread also flopped. This was like the book annex because I filled up that first page of book spines and I literally just stopped doing it. And I don't know why, but we have James Herondale on the other page here. Love to see it. <laughs> For my May wrap up, I saw this on Instagram, I think, and I really liked how it looked. So I did it as well. I will link. Can you link Instagram posts? I'll link the post if I can figure out how to do that. And then I love my June theme so much. Obviously, it's Studio Ghibli. As you can see, I ripped out some pages. Poor Edith, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I put in, you know, like some stills from the movies and it's just so cute. I love it a lot. And what a stunning reading month. This is when I read The Inferno Devices for the first time. What a time. Here are even more books I read in 2021. I read Clockwork Prince and Chain of Gold. What a month, guys. What a month. That last spread was my Inferno Devices spread, which I don't like and I need to redo. <laughs> But here's my general Shadowhunters spread, which I do really enjoy. It's a lot of fun. I love this picture on the right here because it's like all four of the series represented by like seasons. It's so pretty. I love it. And then I also have like a June wrap up and a little July TBR kind of thing. I was getting real lazy. So here's my last hour spread. This, oh, did I, and maybe this is my favorite spread that I've done. Oh, I don't know. I love this one so much. It's so cool. I don't, I don't know. At any rate, it is one of my favorite spreads. So I just, all the gold in it, it's just perfect. I'm such a big fan. Anyway, moving on. I think this is my last like monthly setup that I attempted to do last year because I did not have enough time to like bullet journal. As you can see, I literally didn't follow up at all. Here, however, is my summer favorites. Just, you know, all of my favorite books I read over the summer. More books I read in 2021. A lot of good books on this page as well. A random beginning of fall spread that I really wanted to do and I still love. It's another one of my favorites. And we have my final books of the year. These are just like the last, what is that, like 10 books that I read. And Crooked Kingdom is Upside Down, which I just realized. Awesome. <laughs> Anyway, here's my Six of Crows spread, which I also really love. Any spread with like a black background, I love and I need to do it more often. Just the white pen, big fan, a very big fan. Then I have my favorite books of 2021, which I have not written my general thoughts about and I probably won't, if we're being honest. Here's my 2022 TBR, which I also managed to mess up a lot. However, I have read two of them and here's me like, crying off camera about Chain of Thorns getting pushed back. Anyway, here's my books read in 2022. I still need to print out the last picture on this spread, but these are just the first 21 books that I've read this year. Here are the companion book stacks to my 2021 reads. Here are my 2022 releases. I need to do a better job at filling this out. I also stole this idea from Books with Chloe. She does something very similar in her own bullet journal, and obviously I wanted to do it too. So these are just like my reading goals. My goal is 50 books, but only 48 squares fit on the page, so. And then on the other side, I track how many physical books, audiobooks, and ebooks I read, just, you know, for fun. And then I have my Akatar map, which I'm still thoroughly impressed with. And I also ranked the books on the side, just because it seems fun. This is the only order. Fight with me about it in the comments, please. I kind of like this page. I think the title looks decent, but it's not great. Here I did a little spread from my weekend readathon that I did a couple of weeks ago. It was fun. This is like the planning phase and then I kind of like wrote a little reflection on it, which is fun. I really like this page a lot. Here are more books read in 2022 with the Heartstopper font because I was literally writing things in that font for like four days and I couldn't stop. But I need to print out like all of the covers for this page. I just don't have a printer. I did another spread for my weekend readathon. I mean, why not? It's fun. There's a, the fortune from the Chinese food that I got that weekend. Just fun. Here's my spread for hitting 5,000 subscribers, which is still absolutely insane. I absolutely cannot believe it. And thank you so much for subscribing and sticking around. I just, it's crazy to me. So I had to do a spread for it. And I really like the spread. It's very colorful. I'm a big fan. Then I did the first wrap up that I've done all year for April. I read 19 books in April. So I was like, you know what? This deserves a, a spread. 
And then I have my daily Dracula spread, which I will explain in a vlog at some point, but this took me so long. But oh my god, it is so satisfying to look at. Look at all of those boxes. Are you kidding me? Love it. Anyway, that's it. That is all that I have in my 2021-2022 bullet journal. We're gonna go back to me <laughs> for the outro. Who else would we be going back to? Come on now. All right, guys, so that is the video. I hope you enjoyed the flip through. I had a lot of fun filming this and just talking about all the spreads that I've done because most of these, I like, haven't shown anybody. And I would love to know if you guys are interested in, like, book journal content because I could make some, but if you guys don't want to see it, like, that's cool too. I'd love to know. Please let me know. I will have a couple of links down below for things that I mentioned, like channels, these journals. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in my next video.